Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stops stories. St. Lucians have been advised that their competitive edge depends largely on their ability to innovate. The ECCB joins Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney in efforts to secure the region's climate resilience. St. Lucians among the nearly 800 graduates of the UB Open Campus. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyole. St. Lucians have been called upon to be guided by some key buzzwords that include revolutionize, modernize and transform as they embrace their competitive edge. The call was made at the official launch of Productivity Awareness Week, spearheaded by the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council. Here's Anissi Antoine. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council has officially launched Productivity Awareness Week. In its sixth year, Productivity Awareness Week is being held under the theme Embracing Competitiveness and Innovation. The objective of the Productivity Awareness Drive is to encourage discussion amongst private and public stakeholders on ways of improving St. Lucia's competitiveness. Gerard Bogas is the chairman of NCPC. Innovation and research have emerged as critical factors that must be addressed in creating jobs, and boosting growth and competitiveness in our island state. There's a great need for investment into research and development that promotes innovative strategies and ideas to spur economic growth. Based on information obtained online, advanced economies such as the US and Germany spend on average 2.8% of their GDP on research and development. In our part of the world, the average is 0.3% of GDP. Laura Japier, Operations Manager of Invictus Inc. Solutions for Alternative Energy, stated that St. Lucia's productivity and competitiveness relies on an inventive commerce sector that embraces research, technological innovation and international partnership. New technologies are constantly disrupting our lives. Citizens, industries, political regimes, no one is protected from the constant progress in, let's say, artificial intelligence, internet of things, e-commerce, etc. So much so, we can sometimes feel impotent and overwhelmed being a small developing state with limited resources. However, this developmental wave does not need to be passively accepted. On the contrary, it needs to be administrated and fashioned into the driver for transformation we want it to be. Productivity Awareness Week commenced on Monday, October 14th and will culminate on Friday, October 18th, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The 94th meeting of the Monetary Council of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, the ECCB, was held at the ECCB headquarters, Basterre St. Kitts and Nevis, on 11th October 2019 via video conference under the chairmanship of Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell. The Monetary Council received the Financial Stability Report for the ECCU for the period January to September 2019. The report revealed that the ECCU's financial system remained broadly stable during the first nine months of 2019. The report also indicated that the financial sector continued to experience growth as evidenced by the rise in both assets and deposits, the credit growth had become more sustained and broad-based across sectors. Council noted that growth remained resilient at the ECCU level despite international conditions. Key contributing factors to growth, including an increase in tourism arrivals, higher public and private sector investments, and an increase in government consumption. Meantime, the ECCB is ramping up support for climate resilience in the region, expanding discussions by St. Lucia's Prime Minister on the world stage. Honorable Alan Chastney has been lobbying the global community for actionable change in how it engages the region in the areas of financing post-disasters over the last two years, beginning during his tenure as chairman of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, in June of 2017, and now as chairman of the Caribbean community. Lisa Joseph has more on that. So if we don't build a physical resilience, 
to reduce the amount of economic impact and chaos that the storm causes, then we become uninsurable. So a good friend of mine who has a hotel in Dominica, his insurance went up 600%. 600%. So, 600%. So it's wow. now 20% of his operating cost. There's no model in which you can pay 20% of your operating cost for insurance. That's just not viable. And that's now. And since that hurricane, nothing has happened. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney speaking at the World Economic Forum's Sustainable Development Impact Summit on September 23, 2019. Honorable Chastney was a panelist at the summit which discussed transforming markets, redesigning today's economic models. Senusha's prime minister at that forum brought to the fore the stark realities of small island states like St. Lucia as they take on the Herculean journey to climate resilience. Honorable Chastney's note to the World Economic Forum is one that has resonated with the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, the ECCB. In fact, Governor Timothy Antoine says there must be heightened discussion in the region on insurance and financial protection. Speaking at the launch of the ECCB's Financial Information Month on September 30, 2019, the ECCB governor stressed that as the region strives to become the first climate resilient zone in the world, the issue of financial resilience is of paramount importance. Insurance, which is essentially a form of risk transfer, ought to be seen and properly recognized as a key element in our region's resilience framework. As we speak, about two-thirds of natural disaster losses in the Caribbean are uninsured. I repeat, two-thirds of natural disaster losses in the Caribbean are uninsured. At the household level, many homes are uninsured or uninsured. Some suggest only about 25% of our household stock may be adequately insured. Governor Antoine indicated that the financial protection gap in the Eastern Caribbean presents a major impediment to sustained development and shared prosperity. We cannot start over our development every time we experience a natural disaster, medical problem, or financial reversal. Instead, we ought to position ourselves to bounce back quickly, the classic definition of resilience, to bounce back quickly after we've been hit by the storms of life, which inevitably this concern by the ECCB's governor was highlighted by Honorable Chastney when he addressed the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly on September 27, 2019, as he recounted the devastation wrought on the region by hurricanes Irma, Maria, and most recent Dorian. Against that backdrop, Honorable Chastney announced a new partnership between St. Lucia and the World Economic Forum as the island strives to be the first country to implement a country financing roadmap, CFR. The CFR is a platform to support countries in making a transformative shift from, a transformative shift from funding to financing. It will harness the collective intelligence from the WEF's expansive networks and promote consensus on the main challenges that limit capital flows to St. Lucia. It will also leverage coordinated action to move from a holistic diagnostic to a country-specific tangible action plan. We are grateful for, those, for this opportunity to be the test case for this initiative and look forward to its success and once successful to be replicated across other states. The governor of the ECCB says Financial Information Month throughout October offers all the platform to discuss openly the challenges and opportunities of financial stability. The theme for the month's observance is plan for uncertainty, make insurance your priority. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. On Monday, October 14, 2019, St. Lucia joined the international community in observing World Standards Day. As part of activities, the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards hosted a seminar for stakeholders in one of the fastest growing sectors in the economy. The beauty and wellness sector in St. Lucia is guided by four standards, a general code of practice, 
one specific to the spas, one for hairdressers and barbers, and one for tattoo parlors. The standards look at the minimum requirements that ensure that practitioners operate in a hygienic way. As part of the observance of World Standards Day, the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards held a seminar with those who operate in that sector to educate them on these standards, as well as a certificate program for the sector. Zane's Dubuzon is the head of certification at the Bureau of Standards. We have had establishments that have become certified and what we want to advocate is for them to continue the certification. We want the consumers because at the end of the day, if the spas are certified, if they implement the standards and nobody is asking them, are you certified? Are you licensed by the Ministry of Health? Then they don't see the need for it. So we want to inculcate um, a culture of quality where the consumer is actually conscious and they would actually go into these establishments and look for these certificates. Certification, however, is a voluntary process and according to the head of certification, it is consumer driven. This um, activity today, I mean, we start in the process and in the future, I think it's important that we have some meetings, town hall meetings with the consumers um, so that they are aware of the standards. So we have a lot of work to do and be aware of it and in the future we will definitely be targeting consumers. World Standards Day was held under the theme Video Standards Creates a Global Stage. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. I've been forced to do this by my trafficker. I was promised a better life, but got forced into domestic servitude. I can be any age. I can be any gender. Any ethnicity. I am. I am. I am a victim of trafficking in persons. Know the signs. See it. Report it. If you see me, please help me. Call the TIP hotline at 847. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. We start today with some results in under-19 Big 8 netball. Sufra Comprehensive defeated Trizel Secondary 48-14. For Sufra Comprehensive, goal shoot Trishel Didier scored 7 from 10 attempts. Goal attack Tansy Pascal scoring 41 from 59 attempts. For Shrizel Secondary, Valerie Gustav scored 4 from 13 attempts. Nella Nelson, 10 from 19 attempts. Miku Secondary defeated Castries Comprehensive, 30 to 26. For Miku Secondary, Simaj Margaret scored 30 from 40 attempts. And for Castries Comprehensive, goal shoot Rina Jean scored 23 from 40 attempts. And goal attack, Taisha Kade, 3 from 5 attempts. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is continuing with its National Youth Mentoring Program and has been carrying out some training of prospective mentors. Shelly Ann James, an Associate Clinical Psychologist, has been engaging mentors on how to carry out their roles. We're doing the mentoring training. We're training the mentors, preparing them to work with mentees in the National Youth Mentoring Program. Today we're equipping them and deepening their understanding of the issues that youth deal with. So we're going to sensitize them to psychological needs of young people, people in general, but specifically young people. We'll also be giving them tools to work with the young people in their mentoring relationships. Hopefully we'll also be strengthening them in their own resilience to deal with their own issues because all human beings have issues, mentors included, psychologists included, 
right but as we cope with our issues and we can come alongside someone else a younger person to help them deal with their issues we'll all cope better we'll have a better society james also identified the way forward for the mentors after they have completed their training so the mentors will be paired with mentees coming from schools because it's it's a youth program it's not including children at this point so from 12 to approximately 17 18 right and the mentors will be working one-on-one -on -one with the students and they will see them usually in a school setting or in another public facility like that the parents will be included so the parents will meet the mentor they'll know exactly who is working with their child so that we have a wraparound approach it's not a program in isolation so the school can be aware of who is working with a student the parent is aware the community is aware so we can ensure safety as well it is expected that the training of the mentors will leave them in a much better position to deal with issues being faced by the nation's youth and that's your segment from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Nationals from 16 Caribbean countries have graduated from the University of the West Indies, the UWE Open Campus. Since 1948, the University of the West Indies has been shaping the minds of Caribbean citizens, producing world-class individuals who contribute meaningfully to their respective countries and even beyond the Caribbean region. On Saturday, October 12, over 700 graduates received their degrees and certificates, joining the alumni of the university. University Chancellor Robert Bermudez reminded the graduating class to remain engaged and contribute to nation building. In addition to your family, you are now a member of an ever-growing UWI alumni community that extends across the world. Remain engaged with your alma mater, stay connected to your UWI friends, join your local alumni chapter, mentor a student, contribute to the development of curricula by serving as a junk faculty. Individually, we can make small differences. Collectively, we can make a tremendous difference to how the Uni U University of the West Indies continues to grow and evolve. Class valedictorian Novinia Isaac received a Bachelor of Science in Social Work with first class honors from the UWE Open Campus Dominica. She implored the graduating class to remember why they began this journey. With this diploma that we will hold in our hands and then pose for our pretty and handsome pictures, which we will no doubt flood social media with hashtag search at hashtag UEGrad2019, hashtag first or second class honors, hashtag I made it. However, let us not forget why we fought for this paper that tells the world that we received the first class education from one of the top 4% of universities in the world. Let us also not forget the values instilled in us during our stay here. Core values that the University of the West Indies stands for, so, stands for such as integrity, excellence, gender, gender justice, and diversity. Let us make ourselves, our families, this prestigious institution and the professions which we represent proud. The presentation of graduate ceremony was held at the St. John's Pentecostal Ministries, St. John's Antigua. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Art Creole. Si ou jouen nan bil ki ho, gade si siten ou ka koule. Se pa tout lè ou ka ywe, kote siten la ka koule. Avan ou kouye ou asko, examine siten la pa kou. E kwi ni mi woa ki asou mita. Pa se vid loa pou 3 minit pou yon neditan. Deviwe e kwi ni me woa ki asou mita. Si ni me woa chanje si ten la ka koule. Kouye an ploma pou oje poblem la vitman. Sa se an komisyon hod wasko. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Merci autant, Disha.
Monsieur, Madame, département universitaire responsabilité pour information en gouvernement, c'est aussi GIS, c'est le pays télévision national PANTN. Capacité nouvelle à Kouyol. Président Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement cette ci embrassé très fort. Nouvelle que le gouvernement Canada a établi un centre qui peut payer à faire application pour visa pour voyager en pays Canada. Développement ça là, venu en réalité après plusieurs discussions que le gouvernement cette ci a été le gouvernement Canada à ce code PEP cette ci À présent, cette ci a été sauvé à ce qui a été de côté pour voyager dans un autre pays pour faire application pour trouver un visa pour voyager au Canada. Ambassadeur pour le Canada et l'Amérique, Anton Edmonds, déclaré que c'est une grande croyance qui a accepté une nouvelle salle qui a des affaires visa au Canada quand il a commencé l'opération en cette ici. Selon l'ambassadeur Edmonds, l'initiative salle a porté autant de soulagement pour cette ici comme il n'y a pas pour voyager dans l'autre pays pour trouver un service salle encore. Il a ajouté que la situation salle c'était un particulièrement pour le business comme cette ci c'est tellement bon il a suivi le Canada. À ce estimation qui fait, il était coûté cette ci sortie sorti depuis 2 000 dollars pour un individu pour un hôtel de 8 000 pour la famille de 4 personnes pour voyager pour Trinidad et Bebabad pour présenter l'application pour un visa. Discussion à ce situation visa Canada commencé depuis l'année passée pour tenir un engagement réglement et puis les officiers du gouvernement Canada. Le gouvernement cette ci a approché le gouvernement Canada pour établir un système mobile. Alors, la n'y a pas une pièce de raison pour faire un voyage comme avant. Cette application pour Visa Canada est en place pour les gens qui a voulu visiter. Ça, c'est à la vacances pour les étudiants et aussi pour les gens qui veulent travailler. Comme la terre, quand vous avez une journée d'excellence adéquée, production, en ça, nous avons vendu et acheté. Le ministre de la responsabilité pour l'opération de salaire, c'est ici. Honorable Bradley Félix, j'ai dit, c'est ici, j'ai fait tout ce qui est possible pour hausser et adéquer tout article que nous avons en pays, c'est ici. Selon Honorable Félix, c'est fort, c'est ici, continuer pour produire un adéquat qui est acceptable au loin de la terre si nous avons de rester en compétition internationale. Le ministre a vu qu'il y a des forces à faire en direction de ça, mais nous ne pouvons pas s'opposer à ce que tout a fait qu'il y a des forces à faire en direction de ça. Puis, si nous avons en qualité de cette liste, qui tout le monde a la terre, ça dit, ah, il est bon, eh bien, il est plus meilleur pour nous. Donc, ça, un bureau qui a fait, il y a un choix, nous, en cette liste, qui a levé la manière de nous faire la liste de cette liste, quality qui ka qui 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 ka recognize won la terre bon film film là né ça c'est about video you can pas about video bon nous ha we tout le monde qui vient à son vacances saint lucy you ka you ni fonio et ben you ni camera yo you ka point video bon qualité quality technology ha porté ben nous en la terre ça c'est mon là ça voyer ça won la terre bon les moun we ça les moun we manière saint lucy Bel, le oué moun oué manye, yo ka twete yo an difo an establishment a Saint Lisi. Yo ka yvini Saint Lisi. So tout sa se baye ki ka promote Saint Lisi. Ono wap Felix osi ka fe publik la kopren ki, teknoloji video ka fe yposib pou e sa ki ka fet nepot kote a la te a a mem le a e ke ki ka fet. Me, yo si ka fe publik la sav ki, avansman ou vo sa la ka pote ni l'avantaj e yo si febles. Alo, mais cela a fait avec un vêti où il y a une bonne proportion à ce service là. Il y a aussi parlé des efforts qu'il a fait par toute agence qui est engagée dans l'initiative ça là. Par exemple, Export cette louche, Bureau of Standards, et les officiers, le ministère même. C'est pour ça qu'il y a eu un chai workshop. Il y a eu un workshop, après le workshop, il y a eu invité tout le monde de jeunes congouins pour venir où il y a eu un manier de ce qui est fait. Ça y a eu un c'est si vous n'avez pas fait, Then, okay, fin, business okay, fini. Puis, si on a un, 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 un produit, et produit, c'est les gens qui ont acheté le produit, c'est le produit, ça n'a pas bon. On finit. Donc, là, nous avons fait ce workshop, là, nous avons invité ces gens-là pour venir au workshop. Okay. C'est pour, pour eux-mêmes, pour l'avantage à ça, pour venir. 
So, quand, quand, quand um, nous avons une Taiwanese exhibition, nous avons fait Tout le monde qui a fait ça, nous avons fait ça, Jean Saint-Lissi qui a fait. Moi aussi, les gens qui ont commencé à gagner un produit à Yoel, Yoel, mais c'est un magie qui est là. Il n'y a pas de bon, bon, business là qui est croisé. 24 individus, j'ai trouvé succès. Et fini complètement. Il y a un programme d'entraînement en manière pour occuper cheval course. Ça te fait un bas projet national pour assister les individus pour apprendre l'état. Et traitement, ça te trouvé facilité par l'Institut de Stanford, Kentucky, un pays l'Amérique. Directeur exécutif pour l'Institut de Sala, Dr. Reed McClellan, explique que ces individus ont reçu un pile d'entraînement à façon pour bien occuper cheval pour course. Cet idée a commencé le programme Sala et a pris attitude ces chevaux-là. Il a aussi appris pour connaître tout le bâtiment de ces chevaux-là. La santé, la maladie, le coût qui a pu trouver et quelque façon pour traiter et pour empêcher ce qu'il y a. Selon Dr. Macmillan, ces chevaux-là qui ont cette ici présentement, ce n'est pas un roi et un tiers. Et qui a pesé à peu près 600 pour 690 livres. Mais, ce cheval qui a entré en pays, c'est was, was la même. Et qui a pesé à peu près 1 000 pour 1 000 et 10 000 livres. Le programme d'entraînement, c'est pour une grande compétition de cheval qui est le Python's Cup. Le grand coup de supposé pour coup le 13 décembre à son établissement nouveau pour le cheval en vie fort. À peu près 40 des cheval qui a été en ici et qui est supposé arriver en pays à mois à l'heure, c'est octobre. Il y en a ces participants, c'est Jeshwin Andrew, qui dit étonnement qu'il ait assisté ces participants pour trouver du travail, il a ajouté que ça n'est pas difficile parce que y en a une passion, ça c'est ces participants, y en a une passion pour le cheval et j'ai abouté un commitment pour faire ce ça là. Moza Moffat dit qu'il y a une façon qui est nouveau pour eux et qui a remercié Dr. Leland pour ça. Le a commencé l'étonnement pour ça que le groupe a commencé l'étonnement le 17 septembre et qui est très excité pour mettre ça à prendre en opération. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle là aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation pour que vous puissiez considérer que vous avez la vie. Je vous remercie pour vous donner une nouvelle à quoi vous Après ça, je vous remercie pour vous donner une nouvelle à quoi vous avez. Merci, Pale Primus. Et ici, nous allons voir ce qui se passe à nous. Fair to partly cloudy skies with widely scattered showers. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is producing disorganized cloudiness and thunderstorms. This wave has a low chance of development during the next five days while it moves westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. A strong tropical wave located over the far eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Environmental conditions are expected to be conducive for development and a tropical depression is likely to form during the next couple of days. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 3.47 p.m. and will be low again at 10.04 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay was high at 4.54 p.m. and will be low again at 11.31 p.m. The sea is slight to moderate with waves at 3 to 6 feet or 0.9 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.54 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.